that one was kind of high pitched. I don't know. That was that was interesting. <laughs> the upper register. Was it a was there. it a beer? Was it a beer? No. Oh, maybe that's why. It was a seltzer water. Change the formula. Different Change the can. formula. Different can, different pitch. There it is. Man, but, how uh, is this season already a week in July? Into July. Yeah, flew by, came back, already hit up the Fourth of July holiday. Season is in July, as they say. It's July, guys. Everybody starts to get serious. Yeah. Regionals are around the corner, starting to get in the thick of it. I was actually texting a kid I know that marches Phantom last night, and I was like, "How's it going?" Just, he was like, "Yeah, it's going good. It's tough, but things are going well." I was like, "Good man." And well, you're almost over the hump and getting into regional season here, which is a lot more fun. You kind of have the weekends to look forward to. I remember marching myself when you got into regionals, like every weekend, whatever is Minneapolis, San Antonio, Atlanta, Allentown, and you just kind of in the home stretch. You build up to that weekend all the way up to finals each week. Yeah, middle middle of July was rough both summers like that's the point like you just said you're kind of getting serious where everybody gets together but even the first regional or two are still kind of like all right let's get to the good part like the last three weeks like from atlanta onward i would consider the home stretch like yeah every, everything every... between the beginning of july to atlanta is a slog like the first two week like initial tour awesomeness has worn off and you've been on the road for two weeks, you're kind of just like, oh my God, we have three weeks still till we all meet up finally. I've had a couple long bus rides where you're like, don't want to do that again. Yeah. About to go into Texas where it's super hot. Um, and then, yeah, it just, it kind of, it kind of drags there for a little bit. The honeymoon phase, like you said, of new tour and the shows and the lots gets, uh, wears yeah. off a little bit. But It goes away quick. But before we keep rambling uh welcome everyone to the aged out podcast as always i'm your host mike fantini and with me is evan Worrell. i guess it would be i misspoke co-host my bad that's uh, all right <laughs> uh, so today we just kind of want to talk about initial impressions of summer you know the first three weeks of tour are over we've seen a lot of stuff from a lot of groups especially the top groups uh i admittedly have not seen all the shows on the field yet, but I've got a pretty good idea of the drum lines around, around the tour this summer. But before we go any further and before I forget, uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and podcast services such as Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes, uh, whatever floats your boat. So let's just get into it. Well, I guess before we get too far, I know we had mentioned we were going to address like the judging change, the perk judge no longer going out on the field, how that's kind of affected DCI. And actually, very ironically, Dan Shack had made a Facebook post about this, just kind of tagging a bunch of people who are teaching other groups that are out on tour right now or designers or arrangers. He's going to write an article for Flow, just kind of an analyzing people's observations on noticeable differences they've recognized this season with that judge change um, one of which i commented on which we'll get in here in a second um, but i think things have definitely changed lots of things have changed in my opinion i i said earlier in this episode that i've only seen three groups full shows on the field and i think the fact that judges are off the field at least in percussion land has already impacted the design of the shows um crown for an example their exposed moments, they've purposefully staged them in areas where it will be easy to read. And I think that's something that the Blue Devils had always historically been really good at doing. Like, they definitely have been taking that into account for years. But I think a lot of other groups, you'd have exposed moments from the drum line where they'd be in the back. It was still a musically exposed moment, but if the judge happened to have been in front of the front, when that moment happened, they just missed the whole thing or maybe hear it from a distance, but from a distance, you lose a lot of the little detail balance clarity. I don't know. I noticed it in just the three shows. Yeah, I mean, you've seen less of the shows than I have, but I would say what you're talking about Crown has done, almost everyone has done. And it's kind of an oxymoron, because I'm not saying this is the complete rationale behind the rule change, but I know there was the member safety thing that was thrown out, which... I think is already a little fishy of a reason, but then like 
I know visual designers, there was some mumbling about, well, the judges getting into our creative space. Like we don't want the judges out there in between what we're trying to do. And I get that too. But now it almost seems like an oxymoron because the drill riders are being forced to push the battery percussion up front field in order to get them a read in front of the judge if they want to get credit. Yep. So now you have to move them forward more often, which I think forces them to maybe make decisions that they wouldn't necessarily have made if they knew that the drum judge could get back there and have access to them regardless. Um, I also think that it really is starting to affect some groups, maybe more early season, but like with their ensemble timing demand, because in traditional like high school band, college, even in drum corps, the battery spent a majority of their time further backfield as the tempo driver or the listening points. I mean, that was kind of the general consensus, like that's your job. Now, groups have obviously had drum features and moments and parts of the show where the battery has been up front for years, but I feel like it's a lot more prevalent now and frequent because they want the drumline to get that exposure to the judge since they can't get back to them. Yep. hundred percent agree. And, uh, I'm definitely going to keep an eye on, on that idea, at least when I finally do get to see the rest of the shows. Um, I think I'll be watching one of the regionals coming up on the stream. Uh, so that'll give me an opportunity to evaluate and form opinions on all that stuff. But whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. Um, personal yeah, that preference. remains to be determined, I guess. Yeah, we'll see. But we'll also, see, but... interestingly enough, on that post, I was reading some other comments from people who are teaching, and they were saying that the change has definitely influenced the way that they rehearse and the things that they rehearse as regard to frequency, because the moments that are upfield in front of the judge, they're obviously going to hit more frequently to make sure that those moments are crystal but things that are happening backfield that the judge is literally never going to hear, especially like you were talking like the nuance backfield, like you can kind of let that stuff go a little bit just because you know the likelihood that it's going to be heard and critiqued and discounted from your score or ticked is way low. I'm going to put forward an, a, an idea, I guess, something that might happen because of this judging change. Crown's the show that I watched most recently. And they do have a lot of battery moments up, up towards the front of the field, but they're still not on the front sideline. And the judge, I'm, I was paying attention specifically to where the percussion judge was trying to evaluate them from, and he's on the front sideline. He didn't get out at all. I don't know. I don't remember what their limitation is, but whatever. Um, he's still probably 10 yards, 15 yards away from him. And you still lose a little bit of nuance, even from 15 yards away. A lot of little individual balance ticks that honestly are the splitting of hairs that's going to separate your top three or four drum lines by the end of the season to really figure out who the best, most elite group is. They literally almost have no ability to, to split those hairs now like they used to. Like You can't get right in front of them and call me crazy, but there are things in my opinion that get lost in evaluation from 10, 15 yards away. Now on the flip side of that, I have seen a lot of people saying that the front ensembles are getting much more significant reads and time in front of the judge, which is great. I, I love that. I am all for that. I never think that it should be a sacrifice of one to have the other in order. Like, I don't think that in order to get the front ensemble a better read, we have to take away from the battery. And I also no. don't agree in order to get the battery a better read, we should take away from the front ensemble. So maybe like, so I don't think that this change is necessarily the perfect marriage. Maybe it'll change. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I think it's also interesting, the groups that have their front ensembles on the field now that maybe give the judges more access so that they don't have to necessarily judge when they are judging the battery in a traditional, well, let me backtrack. In a traditional setting, if you have the front ensemble like right across the front sideline, if you want to get out and judge the battery, you're behind the pit, like completely mm -hmm. behind the pit. But if they're moving the pit and the front ensemble out on the field, maybe slightly at an angle, just using crown, for example, there are times when you can sample both happening at the same time because you're still in front of both. So I don't know if that will become more prevalent with people putting their front ensembles off the front sideline. So. Yep. Time will tell. We'll see. And I'm still sad 
at the end of the day that we're not going to get the the kind of finals tapes that we have come to know and love. Yeah, that I hope I haven't heard any of the tapes this year, which hopefully I can still get some. <laughs> uh, but I'm wondering how that that affects like what you're able to get from those tapes because the they're not as close in proximity. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, let's not beat this dead horse too much. Um, do you want to get into some specific groups and opinions? Yeah, we can. Um, right. Who you want to start with? Top of my list. I don't know. Is I have Blue a Devils. list. I have a list that Flow released of like their overall predictions based on like a model or whatever. I don't know if we want to use that. Or... In overall core score or drum score? Core. Okay. But I mean, we can use the hey, list mo- to make sure we don't miss anybody. I guess. That's. You want to start bottom or top? Uh, most of my opinions at this point are from like the top eight. So let's just start okay. at the top, and we'll go until I right. blank. So, so I guess we can start with Blue Devils. All right. So I have a Let's lot to say that. about this. I'll let you go first, and we'll see if we're on the same page. All right. BD, I think that this is a more young, more inexperienced BD drumline than I've heard in the recent past. Um, I, I mean, I'm obviously, they're so still far. crazy talented, but... I think that the quad line is still trying to figure things out. I mean, there's been some videos out there of cats breaking like in warm ups on the fields. It's like brutal. I feel so bad. I'm like, ugh. I that's like one of the worst feelings. You just like <laughs> your brain melts and you're like, I don't know where I am. I can't get back in. I can't get back in. Um, fortunately, I never had that happen during a show, or I can't remember a lot, but I'm not gonna say that it didn't happen. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just I also don't enjoy the writing as much especially when i watch it in the full show context i don't know if you've seen their show yet or not yeah I have. but there's there's moments where they have arranging like the snare line has this thing that they're playing with all these like like fast like kind of mackerel type things mm-hmm. and it's like accompanied with like a low brass moment like forgive me brass players or anybody else if that's not exactly right but i'm pretty sure it's like Contra, euphonium, baritone, somewhere in that in that range. But I'm like, this doesn't even sound like it was written like together at all. Like anybody, like they just wrote two completely separate things and put them together. Like, yeah, this works. So, so from an arrangement, I'm just like, man, this sounds really weird to me. Like, I don't know, not digging it. Yeah, I'll let I'm... you go, and then I have another another tidbit. But... Okay, um, I I mostly agree. With everything that you said, uh, it definitely, the first thing that struck me was their presence behind the drum is not what it typically is. Like it, and I think that plays into the whole thing you just said of, this is like the youngest looking BD line I think I've ever seen since I've been paying attention in the past 15 years. Um, they just, some of them look younger than normal. The presence behind the drum just isn't blue devils even if bd has never been even if bd how do i want to say this even if the blue devils weren't the cleanest drum line that year if you walked up to them in the lot it was gonna they were gonna appear as if they're the best thing since sliced bread is that fair to say yeah they like, uh, they definitely owned it and just like performed no matter what exactly and and they filled up the carriers. They they looked like men and women versus boys and girls. And I'm, I I don't want that to come off too harsh because the book's hard. I think the book's hard from what I've seen up close in lot videos. And, and they kind of fooled me this year because I watched a few videos of them immediately out of spring training. And as we learned from our talk with Ryan Ellis is that they typically don't spend a lot of time in spring training cleaning music. So they usually come out pretty dirty because it's all focused on staging and getting the show designed exactly the way they want it from the get-go. And so I saw some videos and it sounded pretty good. I think I actually texted you or or our friend Brian and Brad, BD's coming out swinging this year. This is weird. And then I watched a video from last week of a lot warm-up and I was like, what is happening? it was noticeably worse than the video. And again, one night versus the next, 
people could have lack of sleep. The Blue Devils, that's unlikely. But, yeah, it's just they've kind of started up and gone down, whereas usually they start down and really come up fast to a high peak. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. There's also a part of their show where they do, like, the the tap dancing thing on the props. Did you see that? Yeah. I told a friend of mine that it reminded me of the crown thing the year they played on the propane tanks with the sticks. Yeah. I was just like, oh, that's a unique texture. And then I was like, oh, it's still going. It was very all long. Right, all right, they're, they're, they're still doing All right, still happening. Yeah. I was like, man, this, this went on way too long. I, and at yep. the end of it, a friend of mine was like, yeah, that reminds me of something that I like maybe I did in like high school percussion ensemble. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, that's a good way to describe that. Like, <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. There's some things in the show – the show is unique. I watched it. And I was like, I, I think I would like to see that again, just because there's so much stuff going on. Well, but BD's always been the king of staging stuff very intelligently to make things look visually more demanding from a drill standpoint than they might actually be. But I'm pretty sure, and do not quote me on the time for this. I did not time it, but if I had to ballpark it. They moved and played at the same time faster than tempo, like 164, maybe for a little over a minute of their show. <laughs> like, I'm sitting there watching. I'm like, they're gonna they're gonna move at some point. They're they're gonna have some kind of beady Let- jazz run playing. But no, the horns That's might have done that about another show. But we'll get that. yeah, we'll get to that one eventually. I don't know. People, I mean, bd has been doing it for years, but it just really stuck out to me how little fast drill was there while playing some difficult music yeah all right let's move on we can't yep. if we we we'll have to move through this a little bit quicker or else we'll be a two-hour podcast uh yeah good point which whatever but all right who's next um well on this like list blue coats yep. are like up there um I'll let, let me go first on this one yeah uh i think this is the best blue coats drum line that they have had since 2015 at least for the first three weeks of the season from what I've seen. Um, Past few years, they kind of came on stronger by the end of the season, have had some low points throughout the tour. Uh, Every core does from time to time. But this this year's group is good. They, from the first video I saw from like the second show of tour, I was impressed. It's, they're playing really well. Um, I think the writing is great. I don't think it's super hard, but it's not easy. I think he, I think Rarick found the sweet spot this season. Uh, I think their drum scores are reflecting that. I haven't checked the drum placements from the past few shows. Uh, the show overall is really entertaining. Um, but again, for my personal taste, it doesn't come off as a drum core show. It seems like a stage production on a football field. And that's what their shows have been the last couple of years. Whether you like or dislike that, I personally prefer more traditional drum corps. But I don't know. What do you think? I agree with a lot of what you said um, in regards to the show overall. Like, I just enjoy watching this show. Like the music, like I'm not a huge Beatles fan, but the music is just fun. Yeah, it don't sounds let me good. interject here. I didn't Taste? specify this. The style of show is not to my taste for drum corps. It is still very enjoyable, well designed, yeah. entertaining, great music. So I'm not faulting that. It's just the type of stage show that it comes off as is not to well, my taste a, for. I have work. a reason that maybe that comes across that way. Which, so like I like the music all around. I think they sound great. The battery I think is great. I think the overall percussion package is great. I think mm-hmm. they're playing really well. My only, I think even visually looking at it, the contrast, and even my wife said this, like the con, well, she, she said this before me, but even the contrast of like the core to the guard and everything, it just looks great, reads mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. My only beef is that they do not move. Okay. They, I was going to bring that that's up why, last. Maybe that's why it feels like a stage production, but they don't move. They no. stand still and play so much the brass more so than the drums the drum line moves more than the brass but i'm just like oh they're, they're on the prop standing still they're on the prop standing still again they're on the prop standing still oh look again they're on the prop standing so i'm like come on now like you guys like let's let's move Let, let's move it i feel like but, if i if i march that show i wouldn't break a sweat i mean you might not i'm sure the choreography has its difficulties but 
I fault DCI for this. I fault the judging community for this. Whether you like it or not is up to you. But I think this just goes back to DCI is rewarding this. Now, granted, they're also getting credit for playing very well when they play. When they do move, visually it's clean. The choreography is clean. Um, the show's the very effective. The achievement is super clean. Yes. The achievement. Yes. So they're getting credit for that. But from a, from a I guess, show design. And show design contributes to all the different scoring captions. But the judges are rewarding them. And then, we'll talk about this when we get to Crown. I don't know, where, where's Crown finishing overall? Not to uh, here. It's hard to say since they haven't all gotten together. Top four, top five, somewhere in there. Okay, well, yeah. judging community is saying that's what they want. Yeah, the, deco- the juxtaposition between Blue Coat's movement or amount of movement versus like Crown and Boston is extremely different. Like, Crown is running, and they're moving. And then Blue Coats are parked. But Blue Coats are probably beating them in number right now. We'll see if they beat them when they get together. It's. I think they are ahead right now. Yeah, so the, the judging community is saying this is okay. And if the rest of core, the cores start taking note and say, oh, we don't need to move this much, and we can still still win, have a shot at winning... Yeah, let's play better and move less, and do yeah. more choreography and staging. All right, next up, let's move on. We'll oh, keep real quick, before we move on, one last thing. Um, okay. I watched a lot video of the Blue Coats from like two nights ago. Did they ditch the drum set for show chunks? I have no clue. Okay, because <laughs> I didn't like exercises. Still there, maybe, cool. Maybe he's just not on tour all good. Right now. I don't know. Uh, but there was no drum set. In the video I saw. Interesting. Mm, All right. Whatever. Interesting. Uh, I want to do Crown next. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can go Crown next. It's fine. Okay. I'll let you start this one. Uh, Crown show. Beneath the surface. I, I I love listening to this show just because it has a lot of energy and they move. Like, that's more along the lines of maybe what I would consider it, probably you two of what a drum corps show is. They're moving. They're playing. Their marching band, like their marching, go figure. Um, <laughs> they do a lot of mix meter stuff with like the seven eight moving in and out of it. Seven four, it's all over the place. I think that makes it very rhythmically intriguing. Um, I, beneath the surface, do I know what that means? Not necessarily, but I could say that for probably three fourths of the shows in drum corps this year. Like, oh, do I get what it's about? Not really, but all right, whatever. <laughs> Um, That's I think that they're year. playing extremely well. Uh, I think that they have ensemble, battery ensemble, one of the more blended, balanced sounds. I've thought that for the last couple of years, just the way that they approach the drum, the way that they balance section to section and as a whole entire. Um, I'm a little bit biased. I'm okay to say that. I don't care. I'll own it. But I don't think that that detracts from how I perceive it i mean if they were bad i'd be like well they're not that great <laughs> yeah but I mean, they're definitely not bad i mean you'll be the first to admit there were some rough years before the last three or four that were for down sure. for crown's percussion section so um unfortunately i have in my notes still feels like drum corps you already went over that handling that uh 100 agree um they lost a snare drummer recently so they're down to seven which is unfortunate um, seven is heaven hopefully yeah <laughs> hopefully it doesn't hurt them i don't think it will i think they'll play well enough so. and it'll be fine i would put them probably in the same boat with the blue coats from a clarity standpoint like the three we've talked about so far i would put bd a step beneath crown and blue coats from a clarity and achievement standpoint agreed all right uh yeah the books well written great sound quality as usual like you said Uh, We already talked about the field judging, designing stuff, so I don't really have much else to say. It's just more consistently consistently good playing from that staff and organization, and there's not really much else to say about it. Agreed. I think their pit is better this year than they have been in the past couple years. I will say that. Uh, And I I think that they have more, like, noticeable front ensemble moments where I'm like, oh, all right, they ripped that. All right, sick. Cool. That's That's always a good thing. Uh, the next on my list are the Kadoops. The Kadoops. 
Um, I think the cadets are great. I haven't seen the show. I'm I'm holding judgment and statement on <laughs> on the overall show. You laughing tells me I'm probably not going to like it that much. But no, no. <laughs> um, that I, battery. Granted, I saw. I, I haven't seen it. The, the overall show I haven't seen in like okay. three weeks, so it could okay. change. But... All right. Well, I'll make sure I go on very soon and check it out because the drum line is throwing down. I watched yeah. a lot video of them, and I was like, well. That's easily on par with what Crown and Blue Coats are doing. From a difficulty standpoint, they're, achievement, clarity, sound quality, it's on par. They're in my top three like favorite lines that I like this summer right now. Yeah. Uh, maybe not – I won't say like that those are the best groups, which I'll go over. I guess we'll kind of recap. But they're, they're in my top three of what I like. It's like, oh, I really enjoy this, what they're doing. It's a super aggressive. They are – really good i think that the snare drums are playing some of the best tap fives i've heard in a while and i love that dude just a, a good tap five just ripping through it i don't know warms my soul i don't know it why 100 percent agree and and i don't know i just love seeing hearing tom monk's writing from cadets like that's just what i grew up on i've said it on here a million times it just makes me happy it just fits I mean, there's still some like clarity things, but like well, yeah, I mean, even crown ticks, blue yeah, coats everybody's ticks. ticks still. Everyone's gonna tick finals week. It's just how it is. Some will tick less than others. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody ticked and was like, "Don't worry, that's backfield. The judge will over here." Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, unfortunately, I think what what happened about three years ago. I think Tom's first year back at the cadets. For this recent stint, when they were phenomenal, when they did the chart show to 2017, 2016, somewhere in there, that show was yeah. not that cool. Musically, it was cool, but they didn't get any of the credit they deserved from a drumline standpoint. And hopefully that doesn't happen to them this year uh, if the core happens I think to they're not be more in the credit. mix. I think that they actually were like beating like blue coats and drums or something like, Good. <laughs> like a week could, or so ago. I could 100%. Maybe that might not be accurate, but I'm pretty sure that was that was the case well they should at least be in the ballpark of the blue coast now again for, i can't comment on the front ensembles those factor into the scores but i can't I actually imagine. haven't seen much videos of their front ensemble i haven't either i haven't found any all right so that's enough about the cadets uh vanguard vanguard uh did i go first last time do you want to go first uh, i'll start i don't have a whole lot to say it's what we're used to it's more of the same it's paul rennick it's very good. It's very polished. Um, it works. Works with the show from everything I hear. Um, there's not much else to say. Snare line's good and clean already. Bass line sounds good. Qu the quad line is phenomenal. I will point that out. I think they have the best quad line I've heard across any group this summer so far. Maybe. Yeah, that's a good argument. I would put there. another quad line. I would put cadet quad line over them actually, but okay. Um, I'll have to expand maybe my not sample in terms size. of clarity yet, yeah, but difficulty, difficulty, yeah, probably, yeah, um, yeah, like, <sighs> all right. How you know what you're gonna get when you walk up to watch Vanguard. I was gonna up, say, you know like, exactly before what you're gonna I get. click play on the video, I can hear it in my head. All right. <laughs> I know what it's going to sound like, and you just know what a Paul Rennick book sounds like. There's no denying it. Like, you could play it. If, if somebody knows drums, you could blindfold them, whatever you want to do. Just give them the audio, turn it on for, like, 10 seconds. Like, oh, it's Vanguard. Oh, it's Old School Phantom Regiment from when he was there. You just know what it sounds like. And I, it's so good. Like, they're so good. They're <laughs> yeah. great. So you still enjoy it. You're like, yeah. it's so good that you can't not like it. They play so well. It's, it's clarity it's there they're aggressive it's there <laughs> but after it's done i'm like yeah cool all right that's that's what i expected i was i was not surprised there i feel like there's no moments where i'm just like wow you know like something caught me off guard like those cadets like busting those fast tap fives or yeah. somebody coming up and playing just like out of nowhere some super isolated cold attack fast singles that like just come out of nowhere like well i knew vanguard was going to do that and they did it, <laughs> and they did it really well. So that's about all I got. Yeah, yeah there's not a whole lot else to say. It's just, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And yeah, that really is the case. Consistent greatness. Yep. But. 
Exactly. All right, I have Boston next on my list. Yeah, the Crusaders. The BAC. Whatever. <laughs> Goliath. Yeah. That's the show title, by the way. Uh, I'm going to go I'll ahead go and say it. And you and I right, talked about this before we started recording. Same hand fours aren't that cool. Like, sorry if that's a hot take. They're just not that cool. <laughs> They look uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Probably hurts a little bit. <laughs> they're pinching them out. And even when I, they sound actually... good, even when they're clean, it still doesn't sound that good. It's almost like the snare drum splits. That's one of those things for me. Even when it, you nail it, it's like just the sound quality diminishes so yeah. much by there's the There's so much note. natural decay that by the time it gets to that like, fourth note, you're like, all right. <laughs> exactly. It just barely gets in there. Even if everybody does it together, it's just... And they play so many of them, at least in the clips that I've seen. Dude, they might have the hardest book in the summer. <laughs> it's difficult. They're playing a lot of hard stuff. But... And actually, it was kind of funny that we talked about this a little bit last year about how the top heads just sound super re. It's even more and so And I think this one season. of the members last year commented commented on a video. It's like, hey, like, blah, blah, blah. I know it sounds this way, but it really didn't feel that bad. And I'm still going to say, it sounds like it feels bad. <laughs> it sounds like you're drumming on, like, a tabletop. Like concrete. Ooh. Those things are reefed. They've been marching three quads for a while, too. So I'm not, the fourth guy I've seen in videos, like a rehearsal, uh -huh. like on the field, but like out of the drill. So I'm not sure if he's like working back in from an injury. Yeah. Um, so could be. I'm not sure what's going on with that. We'll keep an but eye on that. Ten and three is probably not an optimal balance for a drum line, but they're yeah, making it I, work. They have ten snares. That I, how did I not notice that? Yeah, man, they got ten snares trying to play I left hand fours. Did not even notice right that. hand fours. I'm like, man, that's uh, well, and I'll say this too: watching their videos, like I click a a Boston video to watch, and they they play the show chunk. I'm like, all right, this is the exact same show chunk as every other video I've seen. It's like their drum feature, and that's kind of how last year felt. Yeah, but maybe they're really maxing out. Like, well, we're backfield for the other stuff, so yeah. we're just gonna really hammer home these drum spots. They get up their drill, man. Their drum lines like in the front, in front of the front sideline. Um, Can you blame them though? Nope, I yeah. can't. I don't. I don't fault them at all. And uh, I swear they probably have the hardest book in summer. But I watched that video and I'm like, I probably can't play that. I probably could never play that. No, <laughs> some of the stuff looks uncomfortable, just flat out uncomfortable. It does. They still do play some very legit three-inch rolls, though. I'll say that. That's true. That's true. They get and down there. They're not a bad drum line by any means. I would put them probably in the second tier of ability, achievement level, what have you, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, probably in the same group that I would have. Would you put them in the same group as BD? Like, if you had tier one as, I'd like, put them in the same group as BD, but above BD. Okay. All right. I think BD will be better than them by the end of the season. Maybe. We'll see. Time will tell. We'll make we'll do our <laughs> predictions and stuff and then we'll then we'll revisit them at the midpoint of the season once we do our post like Atlanta show before finals or something. For uh, sure. So uh, Boston, really hard book, reef top heads. Not super clean right now. We'll see what happens. Um, the last group that I have opinions on at this point, well, second to last group, are the Blue Knights. The Blue Knights? Yeah. You don't have opinions on the Cavaliers? We can talk about them. You want to do that first? Do you want to do Blue Knights? Up to, up to you. I don't Let's care. Let's do Blue Knights first. Okay. BK, digging it. Uh, also another group that I would probably put in my top three lines of the summer that I just am enjoying right now. I feel like they have a little bit more beef to the book i'll say it's still a, a mike jackson book super dynamic space uh space space <laughs> i was gonna say spacious but space in there but i feel like there's a little bit more just i don't know umph to it a little bit more notes a little more content and they're playing super well i think that the quad line looks great i think it's probably one of the best bk quad lines they've had in the past mm -hmm. few years mm-hmm and the touch is just there. Yeah, man. that's what I was going to They play on. roles that just like... It's, Warm your soul. It's, it's like a stick of butter or something. Yeah. It's like, mm, it's buttery. Yep. That, that was the big thing I was going to point out with them. And I think it's more 
Well, they've always played tasty, smooth rolls since Mike's been there, but they're they've got some gut rolls that are just mm. still not a fan of the Mapex drums, but they sound yeah. good. Um, yeah. They're they're making it work. Yeah, they do a good job with them. Uh, I think they make it's them sound more that I think more of my beef with that is not like the lot videos per se, but when they get out on the field, I'm like, man, these just don't project as well as like. Like somebody you just heard that was like on Yamaha or somebody that was on. Yeah. And yeah, the system blue problem, which is probably BD has been staging their drum moments, like literally on the front sideline for years because the system blue drums don't project. <laughs> yeah, they have to, they got to, they're like, Hey, we were ready for this. Um, jokes from, on you all. Yeah. Um, agree with everything you said. It's definitely Mike's beefiest book, like meatiest note dense book. I think he's written since he's been there. Yeah, tasty low end stuff, very dynamic, the typical what you expect at this point. Um, I would say that there's still a decent amount of fuzzies, for lack of a better term. And yes, I did just say fuzzies. We're just yeah. going to roll with it. Um, typically at the beginning and the ends of phrases, and that is due to, I think, the style of writing. A lot of his stuff comes out of nowhere, and it's very unforgiving. Yeah, they definitely test the... Uh the extremes of the dynamic contrast and that, that stuff's difficult coming from half an inch, one inch, like at the yep. gut crescendoing up the, and that stuff, they definitely tend to peak late, which is what you want, but it takes them a while to get that touch and all that stuff mm -hmm. in there. Yep. Typically. Yep. So Taha, you were right. Quad line's good this year. All three of those Texas kids. Man, talk about paying dividends for Monarch. <laughs> right. right? Right? All three of them are going to come back. Monarch's going to have a good quad line next year. All right. So you want to do Cavaliers next? Yeah, we can get into it. All right. It seems like a building year is the only way I need to put – I can think of to put it. <laughs> yeah. Are you collecting uh, yourself? Uh. Yeah, I'm collecting myself. Um <laughs> I yeah, building year is definitely a good way to put it. It seems I feel like when I watch them, they're executing it well, but the book doesn't feel like it has as much energy, I guess, as some of the other groups that they're going up against. They don't seem to have that, especially like if you were to watch a video of them back-to-back -back with, like, the cadets. Like, the aggressiveness just and day. is not the same. It's night and day. And you can even also just read it kind of on their faces. Like, they look like, yeah, I'm comfortable playing this. It's like, well, you look very comfortable playing that. <laughs> <laughs> they all just look kind of chilled out. I'm like, I don't know, man. It's definitely not my favorite Cavaliers book that they've played um, or my favorite Macintosh book. Yeah, I, I don't just, know. Did we ever? Do we ever? They were pretty good last year. Did we ever find out did they have a lot of age outs or something? Or I don't. I don't, know. I don't recognize I no people idea. from year to year very well. Yeah, I don't point. keep up with like, oh, that guy was in the line last year. Or that yeah, guy marched this yeah. group last year. I, I have so, no idea. I, I think building year is probably the best way to put it. Overall, too, like the show, like I watched their show, and that was also early season. But I was just like, man, I do not like this show. It just felt very sample heavy or synth heavy or electronics heavy, and I don't know. I didn't really dig it, but nope. All right, we've gone through eight or nine groups, something like that. Have you... All right, let's just kind of group the rest of them together. So we got Phantom Scouts, um, Colts, Blue Blue Stars. Anything you want to say about those groups? I haven't Cro seen any of them, Crossmen. so I can't really comment. I've seen Crossmen actually. Mandarins, Colts, Spirit, Scouts. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do, I'm definitely going to do my homework on that. Slew I've of seen all these you groups. Named. <laughs> the only thing I'll say about Blue Stars is I didn't think that you could pick a worse uniform than last year, but they you did. did. <laughs> I don't know. I just it's not my it's not my thing. Uh, Crossmen, they they have some difficult body. <laughs> I'll yes. say that. I was watching some of their body. And I was like, man, no wonder. Like, in most of the videos I've seen of them were, like, from Muncie, so that's been even, like, a week ago. 
but the body seems super challenging like it's presenting itself with ticky tacks in the in the hands so definitely creating some some stuff in there um blue stars I haven't really seen much of them drumming to be honest phantom i think phantom is really good this year as far as like the percussion section i don't know about the overall show but yeah the drum line is playing some beefy notes i mean rob writes rob typically writes books that are Time very out. fast-paced timeout isn't ferguson at scouts now and Sparling's at Phantom? No. Well, Sparling is at Phantom, but he's not writing. He's, like, in there helping and, like, consulting and, like, a battery supervisor. But I thought Ferguson... the whole percussion staff swapped from Scouts and Phantom from last year to this year. No. Well, the Scout, the Phantom staff from last year did all pretty much go to Scouts. Like, Derek Shannon, I think is his name. Okay. But um, Ferguson's still writing at Phantom? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, But, like, the book's aggressive. They're playing a lot of notes. Sounds hard. Um, I haven't seen some. I haven't seen any recent videos of them, but some of the more early season videos, I was like, yeah, they sound pretty strong. Good for them. Scouts are getting slaughtered. Uh, yeah. Cult's drumline and core overall, I was pretty impressed with. I was like, yeah, their their shows isn't, isn't anything like revolutionary, but it's just really. I think they're doing really well. They play well. They're placing pretty well in the percussive category. I think they've been beaten like mandarins and academy and crossman and drums and cool. percussion cool I'm pretty sure good for them yeah good for them isn't ollie teaching there delato i believe ollie is teaching there oliver yeah. what up ollie and then uh there's a few other people teaching there i think ben piles is the arranger brody. and like isn't ben brody benji drummer. benji benji yeah he's working yeah. there but yeah so good for them cool scouts awesome. recently announced that they're going co-ed yeah so I think that's been like a few years coming. Yeah. Do you think cabbies will follow suit or you think they'll stay all male? Um, I'm wondering wondering if they'll feel pressured to. They probably like, hey, will. Like, hey, you guys are holding out. They probably but, will. I mean, honestly, it's like long overdue. And I know the scouts had a long tie to the Boy Scouts and that. And even the Boy Scouts in mainstream culture have recently adopted a co-ed um, policy or structure, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> but – I mean, the scouts, they got to do something. I mean, they got to change it up. They have to get as much talent come through the doors as they possibly can. And if that's allowing girls to come in, I think that helps them so much. Well, it just expands Especially, your talent pool. It, it expands, expands talent your pool. talent pool by double. Yeah. I mean, in that theory. just makes sense. Yeah. I think it, in theory, I think it's legitimate. Think about the ratio mm -hmm. of girls to guys in the guard world i'm sure it's girl heavy which makes the most sense they do dance and all that <laughs> you're missing out yeah, yeah especially I mean... especially when you start factoring in probably the staffs that teach winter guard that probably also work on the stouts scouts color guard staff like oh we have all these girls that we teach in the winter that are phenomenal but we can't bring them to the scouts because they're girls. Like that makes no sense. Like yeah. your staff isn't able to recruit the kids that they already teach year round. Yeah, like that's true. That makes the most sense. And some people were like all upset. I'm sure. Like people were like, oh, they're gonna lose support from their alumni. And like they're gonna lose support from alumni that don't care about the core. Then. Yeah. I don't. Like I don't, if you I think it's if a you good thing. care, I think it's all. If you care about it, then you'll support it. Like whatever. You should want them to be competitive. Yep. and good and as best as they possibly can so yeah all right there's probably a lot of things that i said in that rant that probably come across like super like oh you didn't word that right but i don't really care yeah well that's the world we live in life goes on <laughs> uh so yeah i think we should close this one out nice oh and short, do we want to do oh. like any like predictions or like yeah. tier or groups I, I don't think i can do predictions yeah, like I was as gonna... far as like what i think but i can definitely group some I was going to say, let's not do any rankings because we haven't watched a regional where everyone's together and we could watch them all back to back and kind of really start seeing how they line up. Um, let's just say who our top three are right now. And then when we do the next episode, when we talk about post regional stuff, we can talk top about, three. All right. Hold we on. can talk about some rankings and then I'm going to make a drum title prediction just so I can be crazy wrong. But so you want to do well, who's your top three right now? Percussion right. sections, percussion mm, sections. Top three. All right. This isn't 
I won't do it in an order because I'm not really sure if I even believe yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But top really. three, Blue Coats, Vanguard, Crown, somewhere in the top three. Ugh, Cadets, uh, top four. Mm. <laughs> That'd definitely be my top four. Yeah, yeah. Cadets maybe swapped out in the top three with somebody. Yeah, all right, that's what I got. All right, my top three would probably be Coats, Vanguard. Only because my sample size is small. And I'm going to see a lot more as groups get better throughout the rest of the season. Just say it. Cadets are in my top three over Crown <laughs> right, right now. You. you knew what I was going to say. I mean, yeah, yeah. You knew what fine. I was going to say. Uh, yeah, I would I would say I don't know what the order is. Um, probably Coats slash Vanguard in the top two some way. But I could easily see Crown becoming the best by the end of the season. I could see, really, I think one of those four is going to win drums. Personally. I think those are my top four, though. And like yeah. if we're talking like a tier one, Coats, Vanguard, Crown, Cadets. And then if we're going yeah. into tier two, I'm going to go Boston, BD, and BK. Yeah. In my I think t- that'd be my, my tier, tier two. two. And then I think, and then I, would, I can't comment yeah. beyond that, honestly. I'll have to watch more before the next episode we do. And then I, uh, have a better I, idea. Yeah. So. Yeah. I and some think, people are like, oh, you forgot the Cavaliers in tier two. I'm like, nope, I didn't. I will so put them in my tier two. <laughs> I'm gonna make a way, way too early drum title prediction. That's, I don't know. I think Vanguard's won the last two years, right? I think they've won like the last four years. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't. I think it's like three out of four. I think it was. No, the I last think it's two. straight up four. I'm, I'm honestly serious. Hold on. Let me look. I'm gonna Google it. <laughs> I think Vanguard's gonna win again. Fred Sanford Award. Let's Google it. Fred Sanford High Percussion took me to snare science. Perfect figures. Awesome. Um, 2016, 17, and 18 is Vanguard. Oh my God. They three repeated. Yep, that's right. Well, I um, think they're going to win again. And they won in 14. So they've won right now. They've won four out of the last five. They could make it God. five out of the last six. I think they're going to win. Dynasty. I, I could also see, and. Because I'm an alumni, this could be a year where the Blue Coats could finally get that elusive drum trophy for the core. Uh, this is a group that I think, as long as they continue on their trajectory they're on, could do it. Blue Coats and Crown have still neither never won a drum trophy. Uh huh. I think either one of those groups could potentially do it. I think because the Blue Coats core, I think, is going to finish higher. Uh, I think the Blue Coats will have a better chance this year. Unfortunately, I hate that that it impacts it, but it does. So, yeah. And it also depends who's on the field. I mean, yeah. let's just be honest. I mean, Some judges give credit where credit is due more than others, is a way to put it. Some judges have a musical preference over others. I mean, it is what yeah. it is. Yep. All right. We're rambling. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, again, just tr- as a reminder, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, um, iTunes, Spotify, all that stuff. Tell your friends, keep spreading the word, and then hopefully we'll see you guys, any of you all, at uh, some shows. I think we might be making the trek to Atlanta if things work out. Definitely be in the lot at finals. Uh, Yeah, so we'll just see everybody next time. Peace.